Hello, my name is Melissa Mountain, and today I will be presenting my findings on the thesis topic, Post-Pandemic Educational Design, How New Learning Styles Affect Childhood Development. Mentors include Committee Chair Mary Golden, Assistant Professor and Department Chair of the Interior Design Program at RIT, Jackie Driscoll, Interior Designer and Co-Owner of Design Space Studios, and Whitney Rapp, Associate Professor and Associate Dean uh, at the School of Education at St. John Fisher College. Thank you so much for your time and expertise in guiding me through this process. I would also like to acknowledge Sheldon Cox, Instructional Technology Resource Teacher at the Rochester City School District, Brenna Tyring, Interior Designer and Co-Owner of Design Space Studios, and William Tracy, Operations Manager at the Rochester Institute of Technology, College of Art and Design. Thank you for your insight and expertise um, that you've provided in my project. Lastly, I would like to thank my, all of my fellow classmates for providing me with their continued support. The thesis question I'm investigating is what will post-pandemic schools look like and how will this adjusted learning environment affect child's behavior and ability to learn? The purpose of this research is to explore how to limit these adverse effects through creative design processes. Due to the current global pandemic, the world of design will be changing immensely, especially within educational environments. Approaches to navigating COVID-19 and creating a safe learning environment will not disappear at the conclusion of this pandemic. In March of 2020, educators across the US found themselves rapidly changing their curriculum to move to online virtual classrooms. The effects of this new type of learning disproportionately affected students throughout the country. Literature review findings show that there are four major categories to consider when reopening schools. These factors include physical environment, health and safety, technology, and budget. First, technology. Low income students, as well as the vulnerable populations were especially affected by this switch. According to a research, according to a report done by the Pew Research Center, when schools were closed, 15% of U.S. households and 35% of low-income households with school-aged children did not have access to high-speed internet at home. Physical environment. There is a direct impact between the built environment and children's ability to progress in their learning skills. Three design principles that should be taken into account when designing a classroom include simulation, individuality, and naturalness. In a study, Naturalness accounted for around 50% of the impact on learning, while individuality and simulation account for roughly a quarter each. Health and safety. School settings not only provide academic support, but emotional and social support, especially to the vulnerable populations. The switch to online learning eliminated many food and counseling services that students once relied heavily on. In order to ensure the safety of the faculty and students, students will need to take measures of precaution, such as providing clean surfaces, providing socially distanced areas, and ensuring air quality infiltration, as well as providing masks. Lastly, budget. Cost considerations when returning to the physical environment include building condition assessments, hand washing infrastructure, industrial hygiene, indoor air quality, and mental health design support. Assessing building conditions should include audits on HVAC, plumbing, lighting, IT, fire protection systems to verify operational ability after a prolonged shutdown or reduction in occupancy related loads. This should also include the implementation of durable, easy to clean materials. The research agenda consisted of a comparative analysis, interviews with K through five educators and a classroom audit. First going into the comparative analysis, um, this comparative analysis compared a pre-pandemic classroom with a current classroom that responds to COVID-19 in order to understand the effects new learning styles might have on childhood development and education. In this study, a typical pre-pandemic classroom was studied as seen in figure A and a typical or a current classroom that responds to New York State COVID-19 guidelines can see, you can see in figure B. Figure A shows collaborative environments, um, shared materials, reading corners, et cetera, while B shows distance desks. Um, students have their own bin of materials, soft surface items, and collaboration zones have been completely removed from the classroom. In this particular classroom, all students are 
expected to stay at their desk for the entirety of the day. Subjects such as art, music, and library come to them as well as them eating desk or eating lunch at their desks. So an entire day without a change in scenery can be very impacting on pupils and take a toll on their social and emotional health. Next, a variety of K through five teachers of different specialties were interviewed over a two month period. Data was collected from a total of 25 teachers from schools of different economic status and population. Results from these interviews fell into four main categories, physical environment, vulnerable populations, subjects and instruction, and student behavior. Within the physical environment, desks are placed six feet apart in the same direction to limit exposure. All soft surface items and play-based items were removed from the classrooms. Vulnerable populations, such as individuals with disabilities, are at a disadvantage in new learning environments. According to one special education teacher, students with disabilities, particularly any student with speech and language is, needs, are extremely disadvantaged by masking. It is impossible to look at lips and um, be able to identify sounds and words. So next, subjects and instruction. Skills such as collaboration, teamwork, and communication are particularly difficult to teach with new guidelines because only individual activities can be performed. In young children, social skills and play-based learning are at the forefront of curriculum while academics follow. Due to the decrease in student interaction and playtime, many valuable lessons such as sharing and self-control are limited. Lastly, teachers have noticed significantly fewer behavioral referrals due to the fact that students aren't getting this interaction between each other. And another teacher noted that students are noticeably noticeably more tired and fatigued than in past years, um, both mentally and physically. When asked what their ideal classroom would look like in the midst of a pandemic, teachers had many differing opinions. Um, one teacher mentioned that school should be performed online during the health crisis. Um, they all acknowledged that in-person instruction was extremely important to childhood development, but many were reluctant in doing in-person instruction due to the teachers and professionals, the older teacher and professionals that were putting themselves at risk every day. Um, most teachers noted that their ideal classroom would have enough equipment to accommodate for every student, and the majority of teachers said they wish they had a meeting area that was still socially distanced, um, but was a change from their normal, normal desk scenery. And then the last part of the research agenda was a classroom audit, which was performed at Jackson Primary School in Batavia. This classroom shows similar things to the comparative analysis where individuals have their own baskets, um, they're six feet apart, and they've eliminated a lot of the toys. Um, during playtime, students can choose toys, but then they have to be quarantined for up to five days. So that really has changed a lot of the curriculum that teachers are able to have. This classroom also, um, the subjects would come to the classroom. So again, students would be sitting in the same seat for the entirety of the day. Um, art and music would come to them so they never got a chance to stand up and experience other types of scenery. So conclusions from the research agenda exhibit the need for a module adaptable classroom. The two major considerations when designing a productive learning environment during COVID-19 include collaboration and routine. The proposed solution is a flexible desk system and central table, which will promote collaboration and a sense of security through the use of routine. Main categories addressed in the research to consider when designing a solution include the following. Routine-related teaching, collaboration between students, trauma-informed teaching, flexible spaces, modular components, and durable materials. So these are all things I found through the literature review and research agenda, which need to be accounted for when coming up with the proposed design solution. Going into the concept of these, these desks, amidst the global pandemic, K through five students have been disadvantaged in their ability to learn and progress within the classroom. Collaboration and routine are extremely important in creating both healthy and productive learning environments for children. Trapezo will create a flexible and dynamic solution that addresses the critical need for collaborative environments and routine-related teaching. 
So here are some preliminary sketches of the desk. So the desk is intended for K-5 classrooms and will accommodate for any future adaptions. Unique components include casters for the ease of movement throughout the classroom. Writable surfaces will allow students to creatively explore ideas and a central table to aid in the collaboration between students. The central hub will use conductive charging to bring an aspect of technology to the desks. This idea stemmed from the need for collaboration and the use of technology at the desks. This arrangement allows students to maintain six feet of distancing while still having a form of contact with each other. So this exploded view gets a little bit into the, more into the details and components of the desk. So there is, this desk will be on casters so that you can rapidly move the desk throughout the space. Adjustable pop-in shields of different sizes and configurations will be used in order to um, adapt to many different situations. This um, shield will also be a writable surface so that students aren't only viewing this as a way to protect against germs. It also brings a fun aspect of learning to the classroom and takes their mind off of COVID. Um, the surface will also be whiteboard, like a lam whiteboard laminate so that students can creatively explore their ideas. And lastly, aspects of storage will be utilized um, that can adapt to many different things. A Z hook on the side of the desk will be used for backpack and other soft goods storage, while the um, storage on the desk surface can be used for tissues, hand sanitizer, water bottles, etc. So for the purpose of this presentation, a third grade classroom will be depicted throughout the diagrams and renders. This height guide provided reference for the design of the desks. So here are just some sit to stand diagrams which represent the different ways in which students may interact with the desk. So the desk will be available in four color options, blue, yellow, purple, and green. Additional materials will include acrylic shields, laminate, PVC edge banding, and power coated steel. So here are sort of the shop drawings that depict the construction of this desk which you can further reference in the Zoom chat um, for more detail. So I'll just quickly run through the general idea of these and you can reference them in the chat. So these show the plan view and overall dimensions, um, some elevations with the desk connecting to the collaboration table, and then the different pieces which make up the desk. So again, main finishes include high pressure laminate because of its non-porous moisture and stain resistant qualities. PVC edge banding and powder coated steel, which is highly resistant to corrosion, flaking and scratching. The desk will be adjustable to 24 inch, 27 inch, 29 inch and 30 inch heights to accommodate to different grade levels. Seven different classroom configurations were explored throughout the design process. These layouts address a typical COVID-19 classroom layout in which desks were placed six feet apart. A typical third grade classroom accommodates 55 square feet per student. These classrooms will accommodate for 18 students and one teacher. This occupancy will then be split in half for the COVID-19 layouts to respond to New York State COVID-19 guidelines. So this layout um, just shows a typical lecture layout for a COVID-19 layout. The implementation of safety shields, hand sanitizer storage, and mask storage in these desk systems will promote the sense of individuality. Movable desks, storage units, and whiteboards, along with the use of multiple screens, allows the room to be highly adaptable and promotes the stimulation of pupils. So this is a layout facing the side of the classroom. So there won't be really a typical front of the classroom as modern learning environments um, are moving away from that. So this layout shows the possibility of a subject such as art or music teaching in the classroom. So the room can rapidly adjust to a different side of the classroom in order to, to establish routine. Um, the use of multiple screens will also allow the teacher to have clear sight of students in the classroom and those at home. So the remaining layouts respond to post-pandemic classroom settings. Each of the following layouts responds to different learning and teaching styles. This layout, you can see a typical lecture layout where students are facing the typical front of the classroom. 
This layout will show more of an overall collabor collaborative space for the students. This layout um, will have more of a small group team collaboration um, lecture style. And additional furniture that has been specified in these classrooms, which complement the use of trapeza, include the intellect wave chair with storage by KI, the connection zone whiteboard on casters by KI, and the flow form storage unit by Smith Systems. Lastly, post pandemic four layout will sort of address partnered groups and will allow to have small group meetings with the teacher at the front of the classroom with the use of the collaboration desk. So in conclusion, these desks were created as a response to COVID-19, but are meant to adapt to many different circumstances. These diagrams and visual renderings will provide teachers, interior designers, and school districts with a base for designing flexible spaces that adapt to future circumstances. This study will allow school districts to be better prepared and equipped in the future and allow the primary focus to be placed on curriculum rather than the physical environment. I would again like to thank my committee for their time and support in this investigation and to my audience for their support. Thank you, Melissa. And now we'll open the floor up to Terry for questioning. Hi, Melissa. Thank you so much for your presentation and your thoughtful insight into this new learning environment. It's a new um, world for a lot of us. Some people have not even been in person. So it's interesting to see the way that you're approaching it. Um, I'm curious in your research, you did talk about sort of addressing the vulnerable populations, especially populations that maybe have learning disabilities. And I'm wondering how your design solution might accommodate that community or what your proposed envisionment was of that addressing that need? Okay. Um, when I visited the, when I did the class, classroom audit, um, a lot of the teachers were saying that students with speech impairments were having a particularly difficult time um, with the masks and reading lips. Even when they were using the shields, it was sort of echoey. They couldn't understand. So that is where the idea of the collaboration desk came into place because I found that if I was pushing these desks up to this main table, I could maintain the six feet of distancing and also have that shield so that you would be able to see the person across from you. So that was the, one of the main aspects. Um, and then secondly- that The students would not have the masks in those collaboration scenarios? No, not in those. Um, for K through five, it's when you're seated at your desk with the shield, you don't need to wear your mask. So ex explain again, so the collaboration scenario when they're I assumed you were saying when they're together, like the three groups, to, like three students together, is that the- Oh, sorry, I can show you. So sort of this, um, let's see. towards this front of the classroom, the hexagon shaped desk, that will be the collaboration table. So once they're pushed up to that, that's when they'll maintain the distancing. And they won't need the masks, so it'll help. Right. With yeah, so you'll be able to see across from you. Um, and then the second reason or the second way they um, accommodate for these students is the use of personal storage and personal space um, because having this personal storage can can help a lot. Um, say that again. So having the personal space for the students that need. So the vulnerable populations, they sort of really rely on the routine. So being able to come in, set this in this area, this in this area, that will really help them to create routine and have their own personal space. So elaborate a little bit more on, you had shown one rendering, which I thought was really interesting of a student standing and then the sitting option, but none of your configurations for layout show students standing and working. What What's your, um, how did you imagine creating new environments for, for students to learn. You talked about um, having, not having to sit in your chair for as long to help sort of relieve that stress and the, the fatigue. Mm -hmm. um, I'm curious to know how, uh, how you were imagining that that would be solved. Okay, so I guess in my renderings, I didn't show it because I am just sort of trying to 
focus on the desk, how the desk will be viewed in the classroom. But I did want to include those sit to stand diagrams to sort of show how a child is interacting with them. So um, I guess that's the purpose why I didn't. Had you considered redesigning the way that someone sits in a chair? Like for instance, like right now I'm sitting cross-legged on a chair, I'm very, you know, Korean. So I tend to often sit on the floor. I know that my kindergartner is often laying on the floor, leaning over our furniture. I'm just curious if you had considered just the different way that kids from K to five do lounge on furniture as opposed to sitting at a traditional desk. Okay, that's a good question. I did include cushions on these chairs um, as a way to sort of that's theirs throughout the day. So if they want to take it and, and take it off of their chair and sit next to it on the ground, or take it up to a reading circle when when that's allowed, um, depending on COVID guidelines, um, so that they can have that personal space and sort of move around the classroom. At one point in your, um, I think you mentioned the did the cleaning surfaces are also writable. How are you imagining that um, being used? So um, it's used um, commonly in a lot of the new modern learning environments. So when I spoke with Sheldon Cox, he is the instructional resource teacher for the Rochester City School District. Um, he gave me insight onto the desk surfaces and it really just gives the students um, and the ability, because they're using their Chromebooks a lot, and it gives them this ability to creatively draw out their ideas versus staring at a computer screen all day. Um, so I wanted to create that sort of fun aspect of exploring your ideas. So not a digital whiteboard, but more of just a translucent or, or was the surface drawable or the um, clear surface drawable? So the acrylic shields would be, would have that capability, and so would the whiteboard laminate on the desk surface, which is relatively easy to replace. And so at one point, I think in your manuscript, you talked about in integrating um, um, AR into your, was that in the clear plexi was the idea that there yeah, might some I'm glad you brought that up. So in my next steps, that's something that's included. Um, if time allowed, I would like to further investigate. Um, augmented reality is really coming up on the rise with the rise of technology. So I think that would be a really cool way to um, incorporate a fun aspect of the desk and a fun, learn, fun way to learn while you're distance away from each other. So that is something I'd like to research further. I mean, I just, the way you were describing it and when I read the manuscript, I was imagining kids kind of drawing together, right? You, mm -hmm. you have these, if those screens were actually interactive and they were um, digitally manifested, you could have someone in another station either standing and drawing on theirs and drawing on yours. Um, I was also wondering if there was a way to have a one-on-one -on -one connection between students. Like if there was a larger barrier that, that two could be on either side, sort of drawing in C2 together. Um, it seems like this is a really interesting concept. I'm curious to see where it could have gone further if the kids mm -hmm. could have manipulated the desk in terms of the height, the angle, the usage, the scenario to really push the concept of it being a modular space. Yes, definitely. And these shields can pop in and out. So the um, the, I guess the idea behind it was that they can come off post COVID if, if they're in the way, if they're not using them. Um, but during COVID, they can take them off and bring them to other parts of the classroom and explore their ideas um, sitting somewhere else. But the augmented reality, I really wanna look into that further. So wait, you're thinking of these clear pieces like, like almost like you're carrying your pad of paper to a different place? Yes, similarly to that. So they could clip on and off so that you can move around. And would it be, I guess I'm trying to understand why someone would draw on that versus a piece of paper. What does it um, provide? So I guess it started as COVID eliminated all paper from classrooms. You can't have um, handouts like you normally would. It's all through the Chromebook. So that was a way that it's a surface that you can clean with chemical materials, um, but still be able to actually write things out. I see. And one of the renderings you had, like one of the screen chairs like you're showing right now, but it had another board next to it. Were you envisioning that as an alternative workspace? I know at the beginning you had mentioned that pre-COVID there was a reading corner, there were some soft surfaces, um, that the request was really for alternate 
scenarios for students to engage with the space. And I'm wondering if you had considered any other, um, I guess, zones in the classroom besides these just configure reconfiguring the desks. Okay, yeah, so that is why I incorporated all furniture that was on casters and very mobile. I included multiple screens in the classroom so that you can move um, wherever you would like. Um, and then I included these sort of um, whiteboard dividers as a way to be able to move those around and adjust, rapidly adjust your classroom. Um, and then there's also, you can see it towards the back here, there is this media center that's on casters um, and the back of that is a whiteboard surface and the front of that is where they can keep their Chromebooks to charge. Say that again, where is that? The, the media um, so, thing is the... Let me see if I can get it better. So you can see it kind of there with the green seating in front of yeah. it. Oh, that so is the flow yeah. form by Smith Systems. Um, the opposite side of that has um, spaces for your Chromebook to charge. And then the other side is a magnetic and writable surface. I see. So not really an alternative um, scenario for the students. Not for the students, more so for the overall classroom. Did you do any research looking into sort of what the different classroom looks look like for, you know, you were saying that the students don't leave for music or for art, you know, what are they losing um, in staying in the classroom that might have been there in the scenario for those specials? So they're definitely missing out on a lot. I would say they're, they used to obviously be able to get up and walk to a destination, which really creates that routine. Um, but now that they're coming to the classroom, there's obviously things that are eliminated. Um, through my classroom audit, when the library would come, each student would get one book, and then that book would quarantine. So it's definitely like, if you would go to the library in the past, you had all this freedom to see whatever you'd like, um, versus now it's very restricted. So I guess that's sort of why I wanted that technological aspect um, and movability to kind of create a fun way to take their mind off of that. Did you um, at all take any of these concepts back to some teachers to see how they responded to it, what they found compelling? Did you get any uh, return feedback on that? So not a lot. I did reach out because that is something that Whitney recommended I do. I think it just got really busy for teachers towards the end of the year, but that's something I definitely want to look into. Yeah, I'm curious, um, just thinking, and this is of course for the younger kids because you know I have two little kids um you know if you had looked into learning tools like the Montessori tools uh Reggio Emilio the Pickler Triangle there are a lot of different ways that for toddlers they have created with hard surfaces um, ways for kids to learn and engage more physically and I'm just curious if some of those principles of early education and early education toys how Montessori deals with math and with nature um, might have led to a different solution or, or a more um, some new ideas in terms of layouts of the space of how, how to get the kids to move around a little, maybe how to get um, kids to engage in some of those social aspects that you were talking about earlier. Yes, I'll definitely need to look into that. Yeah, and I'm just curious as to how teachers, you know, right now I've seen a lot of students do this and at my son's school, they do the collaborative environments, but there are still some uh, nuances of the collaborative play of understanding social emotional learning that seems to be missing. Um, and while I, you know, I think your solution is really interesting, it feels a little advanced to me for the K through five, like it, it feels like it's really appropriate maybe for, three through five, but I wonder how, I'm curious to see, and maybe this was, you know, would have been a different rendering is, how does this really apply to the K through two community versus the three through five that is maybe doing more didactic sitting down learning versus the three, you know, the K through two, which really would have been primarily more play-based and how this concept, um, could have felt more play-based? Like, could they have raised and lowered their desks using a Lego system? Is there a way to reconfigure their chair like, like a transformer so that, um, you know, there are some modular toddler furniture that I find really interesting too that are soft-sided that I think could have been covered 
um, and you can reconfigure it. Either you can lay down, you can sit up, you can kneel. Um, so, you know, head, and I understand time is a constraint, but I'm just curious, yes. you know, that, that maybe this would have been appropriate to, to split even further and say it was full focused more towards. Right, yeah, I definitely wish I could have had more time to explore more renders. Uh, I did choose a third grade classroom because that is what my comparative analysis was based on. Mm -hmm. And that's what I had the most K through five interviews about was third grade teachers. So I sort of had more research behind it, but if I were to show more renders, I would show more play-based areas in say a first grade classroom. Very interesting, thank you. Thank you for sharing your Thank project. you for your time. Great work. Okay, Whitney, if you'd like to share some comments, please go right ahead. Uh, nice job, Melissa. Thanks so much for your presentation. Terry, great questions. A uh, few of I had the same uh, uh, overlapped mine a little bit. So I'll, um, I'll just start with some comments and then a couple additional questions that I had. Uh, so um, when Melissa first came, uh, to me with the idea, she had some thoughts on um, what to look into and areas of education that would be impacted by a pandemic. And I brought up some additional areas for her to explore. And she did a really nice job of pulling those into the literature review and considering them in the layouts. So my, my background is in inclusive education. So I don't have interior design background at all. My, I'm the committee member with the um, expertise in the uh, pedagogical nature of what she looked into. Um, I thought she did a really nice job of bringing in the research uh, into her literature review, pedagogical considerations for someone who's not an education major and really thinking about um, everything that is impacting the students at that age level, um, besides just the physical environment, but how the physical environment ties to social and emotional growth and play and, um, and the various needs. Um, a couple of things that you had on the roadmap slide, Melissa, that we did talk about and you added to the literature review was the need for routine for students at this age level and um, trauma. So I wondered if you could, as you were presenting, I didn't hear much about those specifically. So can you talk a little bit more about how that played into your design? Okay, yes. So I guess um, the trauma informed teaching, that's something you brought into my literature review um, that I, I researched. And that was sort of creating a trauma informed learning environment is really about you can educate the teachers one about what the where the students are coming from. Um, students are experiencing a ton of trauma due to COVID-19 and not having um, with all the uncertainty that comes with that. So that's um, my literature review. That was really about um, informing the teachers about the trauma that they're facing. Um, and that was where the routine related teaching came from. Um, one of the main ways you can reduce the trauma in students is creating a set routine for them um, because that's one less thing that they're stressed about. And that's, one, that's something that's certain. If you create routine, it adds that bit of certainty in their life. So that was sort of where the um, rapid adaption of the classroom came from and being able to have when you come in the classroom you put your backpack here when art comes in you move here just creating routine throughout the day mm -hmm. thank you yeah um, a couple of other things i jotted down um you you did a really nice job of um addressing the feedback that jackie and i had along the way about mo mobility of the desks and storage areas which is really important in an elementary school classroom there's never enough storage um you have some some places uh in the classroom for general classroom storage and then you added the baskets under the chairs for students um one of the things to think about is um, if we're moving as desks around a lot during the room, elementary classrooms end up just having a lot of things in them. And I know during COVID, we've had to eliminate, eliminate paper, eliminate all the soft surface things. There's just um, a lot of supplies that classroom teachers have. And the, the classrooms to me look a little stark even compared to 
the classrooms that you visited. So um, when all of the desks are present, it just seemed to me that there still might be, as you move them around, limitations on where the desks can go. Okay. And I don't know how much you've... So uh, let me go back. Maybe I missed it. Yeah. <laughs> So you can sort of see in this view. So um, I sort of included, I took inspiration from the classroom I did visit and included a lot of storage towards the back, um, book storage, file storage, and then additional storage for play items. And I also incorporated a sink. That is something that was incorporated in the first grade classroom I visited. And I think that's really important to adapt that throughout all the classrooms, especially with COVID um, looking forward. Um, and the reason, I guess, I didn't include a ton of stuff like posters and play areas mm -hmm. and stuff in the renderings. I just really wanted to focus on how the trapeza, how the desk would, would look. Okay. Thanks. That's great. That's, a, that's what I was looking for because I, I missed that before, that there were lots of places to keep books and supplies and that you would still have everything that you needed in the classroom while also leaving the space clear where the desks are going to be moved. So. All right, um, let me see what else that. Uh, I think that was about it. Seating alternatives for K to five students. That was one thing that Terry asked about that I was also thinking about in terms of, you know, um, because you had mentioned that they're in their seats all day. Right now for the pandemic, they don't have the usual mobility that freedom to move around the classroom as they see fit. But then you answered it with the cushions on the chairs. Um, is there any way that these chairs um, can be turned around and sat in backwards? Um, I don't <laughs> think these ones that I chose were. These are from KI. I would have to look at the specifications for them specifically. Um, yeah, but I think they're set. Yeah, that, um, that tends to be the reason I ask is um, the a lot of students can benefit, students in, uh, with special needs in particular can benefit from sitting in the chairs different way. And there seems to be if they chairs that they can turn around backwards and sit in, sit in them backwards and, and press against the front, uh, the pressure against the front of them tends to help focus and concentration. So that's you know one of the things that we talk about too. But uh, the fact that you can take the cushion off and lay on the floor can be helpful too. A lot of kids like to lay on the floor for their proprioception. Um, that was, those were all the things that I wanted to make sure that I hit on. Um, so that was all I had. Thank you. Thank you. Terry, did you have any additional questions or comments that you wanted to offer? We have a few minutes if you'd like to. Not particularly. I will admit that those cushions do not look very enticing to lay on the ground. But I think we've talked about, um, you know, I think if you had more time, it would be interesting to rethink really what that, I, I mean, I would redesign the chair. It sounds like this isn't existing. Is that right? Yes, it's from KI. I wanted to make my own chair, but it just became too much to right. model that as well as the desk. Right. Okay. Well, then congratulations, Melissa, on completing your capstone. And I'd like to extend a sincere thank you on behalf of RIT's interior design program to Terry Lee and our committee members, Whitney and Jackie, for their valuable feedback, not only today, but throughout the entire process. We're indebted to you for your thoughtful cross-examination of our students' work today. I'd also like to thank Lisa for helping us out behind the scenes and for our audience here and at home. Uh, for your attention and support of Melissa and the committee and the examining scholar and I will now enter into a breakout room for our deliberations and this completes the final oral defense for Melissa. Thank you all for attending today's presentation.